But let, let me talk about a streaming tight end. And I'm, I'm, I've been known to stream the tight end position. I really don't care about it all too much. Even in, even in like Dynasty, it's, it's really the top three guys. And I'm probably going running back there. So I, I never really do get the top three guys at tight end. So last year, I was all in on Blake Jarwin. And I, I still kind of like him for this season. His ADP is even lower. I wanted to rehash some of those takes, but I'll just throw it out there. Blake Jarwin, got to keep your eye on just because of his situation. Last year, the result was wrong, but the process was right because Dalton Schultz stepped into that same Cowboys tight end spot and was a streamer in a lot of redraft rosters. But this year for me, if I'm looking at a guy that's just being criminally slept on and could step into a great position, even if I'm not totally in on his talent at, at his current age and where he's at in his career it's jared cook who's now sure. with the la chargers and, and looking into jared cook actually got me way less excited for kyle pitts because <laughs> if you look at jared cook's prospect profile coming into the nfl he was also a physical freak 99th percentile and speed and burst and agility every metric but we know what Jared Cook is at this point. He doesn't quite have the juice that he once had now that he's at age 34. Again, where we have seen tight ends still have great fantasy seasons at that early 30 range, even looking back at some of the greats. Rob Gronkowski is still in the league. Tony Gonzalez played until he was almost 40. When you look at Jared Cook, he's a red zone threat. He's a big body pass catching option who can get open down the seam, down the field. He was fourth amongst tight ends in average depth of target with the deteriorating Drew Brees under center last season when he was in New Orleans. He missed a lot of time due to injury when he was with the Saints, but he's been the leader in yards per reception at the tight end position over the last two seasons. So he's an efficient receiving tight end. Now he enters a wide open tight end room in LA on an offense that even last year where you had Anthony Lynn, who's known as the ultimate like feed you're between the, the tackles grinding running back like Joshua Kelly, right? He's a run first guy. That offense, just because of the way things played out and, and Justin Herbert emerging, that offense was top five in pass plays per game last year. So when you have the new coaching staff coming in, taking over in LA, I don't see why they would pivot away from being a high, high volume pass offense with Justin Herbert. And if, if they pay attention to analytics at all, they should be passing the ball. This is a passing league at this point. So the wide open spot, the pass volume. Now, if we project the passing game order to be Keenan Allen as the number one, Austin Eckler is the number two. I think there's a non-zero chance that Jared Cook could be the number three. And, and we've seen Mike Williams. We've been waiting for this breakout for years and years and years. He still hasn't truly had a breakout season. He was banged up most of last year too. Hunter Henry last year as the tight end with the Chargers was second behind Keenan Allen with 93 targets. Granted, Eckler was hurt for a lot of the season. So all I'm saying is that if they ask Jared Cook to play the Hunter Henry role, even if it's a slightly, you know, to a lesser degree because everybody's healthy and, and there's other guys that are trying to get fed. If Jared Cook just plays the tight end one role, he's going to be on the field a ton. Hunter Henry played 29% of his snaps from the slot. He was top 10 in air yards, top 10 in targets, top 10 in routes run at the tight end position. So for a mid 14th round pick in Rejeff leagues, one of the last picks that you're going to take on your roster, I'm down to stack two or three tight ends. Just take some shots. I'm getting a guy who has double digit touchdown upside could see oh, yeah. five to seven targets a game. So give me that all day with Jared Cook. Yeah, I love it. And the char Chargers do love targeting the tight end. Last season, 130 targets to the position. Jared Cook doesn't even need all of that. You, th these other guys they have, you know, Donald Parham and these guys can be involved. And Jared Cook, if he's getting a couple – Targets a game. Four to five is all it's going to take because of that touchdown upside. And if he ends the season with, you know, eight touchdowns, I think he's going to finish as a tight end one, um, you know, a top 12 guy on the L.A. Chargers. So we even saw it with Jimmy Graham last season. I mean, this guy was in a <laughs> far worse situation than Jared Cook. He's had far less efficiency leading up to last year. 
than a guy like Jared Cook. And Jimmy Graham finished as the tight end 13 because he caught some touchdowns. So give me that plus plus with Cook on the LA on the LA Chargers offense. And I think it's a great pick. 14th round. I've been scooping Jared Cook up in some of these, you know, best ball drafts because I know he has that tight end upside. And for season long, I mean, if you're missing out on those top tight ends and you wait, most of the time you're streaming a tight end and it's like touchdown or bust. You just start a guy and you hope he gets in the end zone and that's going to give you the 12 points on the week to hold you over. And with Jared Cook, I think he's going to have as good a chance as any to get into the end zone on a week-by-week basis. So I love the pick.